Hello, and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. This is another page that I created with the Gather Kit from Mercy Tiara Kits. In this one, I'm using the Grateful Heart title, which is one of the cut files that comes with the main kit. So I cut that up with my silhouette uh, quite a while ago and have just been hanging on to it, ready to use it. I'm just familiarizing myself here with my supplies because I scrapbooked this on a Friday night after a long work week. And so I was itching to get scrapping and use up some of the gather kit because the next day I was working with the, with the joy kit, which is the December kit from Mercy TR Kits. So I know I want to use Grateful Heart and I'm doing a little bit of backwards scrapping here, which is starting with my title and then trying to find a photo to go along with it. I'm grateful about a lot of things in my life. So I'm just having a look through some of the photos that I've printed up over the past several months and not had a chance to scrapbook yet. And so I picked out a couple of options there. But I ultimately ended up deciding to go with a more recent photo, so that's why you see my keyboard there. I am just finding a photo of my recent trip to New York, and I just felt like the journaling and storytelling that I wanted to tell that night was around how grateful I was to be able to take this unexpected trip, which I really only found out about uh, maybe a month or two before I went. So I printed that up at three by four and I am going to I'm just figuring out that it doesn't really work with any of those frames I really want to use those frames on this page I really like how they look I'm just talking to my patrons there I do real-time process videos of all of my pages and so I'm if, if I seem a little chatty at times that's why it's because I'm chatting to the camera <laughs> And I'm just trying to decide what I might use as a background. And I think at this point I had decided to create a, a large shaker element using one of those frames. And uh, so that was kind of in the back of my mind all month. And I didn't get to do that. And we're towards the end of the month. So now is a good time to do that. Trying to pick a background paper. And I did have a look at the cardstock that came in the cardstock add-on. But I am still going to look at some of the pattern paper. I'd love to use some of these pinks tonight, but they're not going to work necessarily on the page I'm doing. But look at this beautiful blue. It reads as a solid. It's a beautiful pattern paper that came in the gather kit and I adore it. I also have, because I have the paper add-on, I have two copies of that. So the, the print on the back side of that paper is really beautiful. So I thought I might use that on the page as well. And it coordinates so nicely with that beautiful purpley blue. So I have a few things here. I have a tree patterned paper that came in the kit that I think I'm going to fussy cut some of those trees. And then I'm going to use this for my background. And I also have a chunk of this paper that I'll use the other side of. And I have a whole bunch of sequins left from our confetti mix. This is a Mercy Tierra exclusive confetti mix. Each month we have a confetti mix that coordinates with the kit. And these are sequins that don't have the holes in them. And I love working with those because you don't get little bits of glue that oozes through the hole. I have some doilies left over. The kit came with three doilies and I only used a half so I thought I'd use one and a half here. And at first I thought I might back the whole thing with that patterned paper, but it seemed like that was going to be a little bit too busy for the vibe I wanted for this page. So I decided against it. I'm going to use some little strips of patterned paper instead of using layers. I don't want to forget how I have that laid out. I really like how Grateful Heart nestles between the shaker card, the shaker element and the photo. I'm just showing you a close-up of my tonic distress tool from Tim Holtz. This is a handy tool to have in your stash of all the little specialty tools we get. Some of them, you know, sit unused in our little craft caddies and some of them we, re we reach for over and over again. And this little distress tool is one of those ones that I use all the time. It has little tiny blades in it that you can run the edge of your paper through and it just gives you a quick and easy way to distress, especially something that's this thick because these chipboard frames from 49 and Market are super thick. 
I'm going to cut a piece of acetate and one thing that I used to do is always keep the packaging from children's toys, often come with acetate packaging like this, flat acetate. Uh, definitely hang on to those so you don't have to go and buy acetate like I did. I bought, I bought acetate from Lawn Fawn after we got to the point that our kids weren't, buy, weren't, weren't uh, using things like Barbies and whatnot anymore. But definitely hang on to that if you have little kids. So as you can see, I just placed that acetate across the back. And for some reason, I'm just getting little bits of paper fiber that even though I cleaned up the paper fiber, it keeps duplicating and <laughs> reproducing and finding its way onto that, uh, onto that piece of acetate. It's very staticky, so it seems to attract any last little drops of paper fiber that are hanging around on my, on my desk. I'm using some of this scotch um, adhesive foam and I'm going to use a double layer of it. I like this scotch roll of foam adhesive because buying it in a big roll like this is a fairly inexpensive way to get a bulk amount of foam. I do find it more convenient using foam dots most of the time, but when I'm doing something larger, I always reach for this because it is more cost effective. When I'm doing smaller things, the, the convenience of having the smaller size balances off with the cost. But when I'm doing a big thing like this, it's actually easier to put on large pieces and then you only have one strip of tape uh, adhesive backing to remove. So I'm trying to piece these together so that there aren't any little holes in the middle of it. And the smaller the things are that you're putting in your shaker box, the more important that is. I, even the smallest of these little sequin pieces are still fairly large, so it, they're not going to come out. I used my powder tool to de-stick the edges of that adhesive because sometimes little bits of adhesive are kind of coming off the edges or spreading out amongst the edges and I didn't want them to stick to the to the to the sequins and keep them from freely moving around. Now this is my break screen, which I usually take out for process videos. This is the screen that I put in for my patrons so that they can easily scrub over my breaks when I go to get a drink or a snack or something like that when I'm streaming for a long period of time. However, I forgot to take off my break screen, which I don't usually do because there's music playing, but I had my music muted. So I had no idea that the break screen was still on and I went ahead and did all of these things. I put some glue, this won't last too long, don't worry, but I did put some little dots of glue on the backing that I'm going to be putting in the background of my shaker card. And now I'm just randomly placing some of my little confetti pieces all over the back of that card. I'm doing this so that when the layout stands upright, which it will in an album, when it stands upright, I don't want all of the sequins to go down. So I'll show you what I mean, because gravity is gonna pull all those sequins down. So I've got my sequins in my little pocket that I created with foam tape, and now I'm just going to place that backing on there. And then as you can see, even when I hold it upright and all the sequins go to the bottom, there's still some that remain up top to give you a little bit of interest. This shaker box is filled with confetti pieces. I love the look. And this used almost a whole pack of our adhesive, or of our sequin mix. So uh, most months, in fact every month, we do have the option to add on an extra little pocket of two teaspoons of confetti mix. So if you make lots of shakers, feel free to buy some extra sequins because they will help you be able to use, maybe make a sequin box and still also have enough sequins to do plenty of embellishing with them as well. I have embellished several of my layouts with these sequins. You don't use very many when you sprinkle them. You'd be surprised how few you use. I have leftovers every month except for this month when I made this box. So I just added some of that foam tape to the back of my photo so that my photo could overlap with the shaker box. 
And now I have to decide which of these trees I'm going to use. And I'm going to pick up on some of the browns, the really dark brown that is in the sequin mix. And I made a little cut thinking I'd need that I couldn't get the trees that I wanted on this little scrap. But it turns out all of the trees that I wanted actually were on the scrap, so I didn't have to cut into the full piece of paper, which left it for me to use on a future page. I'm going to fussy cut these trees. This photo was taken in one of those little tiny parks that are in the little bits of land in between the blocks in New York. And our hotel happened to be to open right onto one of these little parks. So we ate a couple of lunches there and I hung out there by myself a couple of times. I was in New York with uh, a couple of friends, but we were there for a conference and the other two had lots of plans for shows and stuff. And I was trying to go as cheaply as I possibly could. So I didn't attend any shows. So I had plenty of time to just bum around on my own. And this was one of my times when I was just hanging out in the park. So I thought that cutting out some trees, I've never been to New York in the autumn before. I've only ever gone in the summer. So this was on my bucket list of things to do is obviously to see New York in the fall when the trees are beautifully um, changing the leaves, changing the colors. So having trees on this layout is important because that's part of the main reason why I wanted to go to this particular conference. I did learn a lot at the conference and it was great to see the speaker <laughs> um, and uh, learn, learn lots, but it was also really great to spend a couple of extra days after the conference and the evenings just shopping and hanging out and eating some really wonderful food. So as I mentioned, I did not want to use layers of pattern paper on this page. So I just cut some strips of these two pieces. I chose that brownish, reddish, orangey paper that has the pink hearts on it because I felt like it had a grounding effect. It, it's dark and it picks up on some of the other dark elements like the trees in particular, but also the dark bits in the sequin mix. I'm going to switch it around like that. Actually, I like it better that way. And I'm basically designing this to be two twin clusters that include a prominent rectangle. It's either the sequin box or the photo, and then a couple of strips below and a doily behind. So this is the use of repetition. And it, it's in a funny way, it's, it's almost a symmetry, even though it's not symmetrical. It, it is a reflecting of... The, the elements on each side of this little cluster. So I will place this down and as you can see once I've made all the little pieces like I made the shaker box, I cut the strips, everything comes together fairly quickly and simply. Whenever I have an element with a lot of pizzazz like a shaker box for example, I like to have the other elements on the page be fairly simple and straightforward. It allows that shaker box to really shine and shininess is exactly what I love about the shaker box. I'm because this title, the grateful part, it overhangs on like it, it spans from the shaker box, which is elevated with two strips of foam adhesive. And also it kind of extends onto that background paper. I just used some foam dots there. And those are the ones that I said are convenient, but a little bit more pricey. And so I'm using those for the overhang. And I found that I didn't even really need any foam adhesive on the parts of the word heart that overhang. So I didn't put any. And now I'm just going to place my trees exactly where I had them before and place my strips below. And that second strip, the one that's white, that has a white background, that is the back side of my background paper. And it picks up on the blue that's in that background paper and it mixes it in with the browns and oranges. 
I wanted just something a little more. I, I am going to be fairly minimalistic with my embellishing here, but I just wanted something here. This frame from Pink Fresh Studio that came in the kit, it says adventures. So I thought that was pretty relevant to this page. I'm going to layer these trees together so that they, you know, showcase each other nicely and complement each other nicely, I guess I, I wanted to say. So I'm using some foam dots because they do go over top of a, a chipboard frame there. And that just draws your attention over here to this other side to balance off with the, the ginormous shaker box that commands your attention over on the other side. So I'm just showing how with gravity, even when those shakers, uh, when all those sequins go down below, there's still plenty showing. I thought about using these wood veneer, but along with my line of thought, which is that I wanted this to be fairly minimalistic so that the shaker box could really shine, I'm not going to use those leaves. I'm going to hang on to those and you will see me use those in the next process video that will be on my channel right after this. This space here is perfect for journaling. So I am, I'm actually not it looks like I'm taping my journaling uh, stencil to my page, but I'm actually not. I'm actually just masking off the lines so that I don't forget because I have done this before where I've make, I was making lines a certain width and halfway down I forgot and, and extended the line too far. So I try to just mask it off so that I remember where the lines need to end. I'm going to put two of those wood veneer hearts from Freckled Fawn that came in the kit on each side. Again, more of that mirroring symmetry for this page. I don't often use symmetry on my pages as a design principle, at least not this prominently. I do use repetition, but not usually in a reflective, uh, even on both sides kind of a way, but I really do like this look on this page. My journaling here says, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to visit this amazing city once again, this time to attend a conference for work. Once the conference was over, there was no agenda and no need to rush everywhere. I just got to hang out, shop, and eat amazing food. It was lovely to have friends with me, but since they attended lots of shows, I had plenty of time to chill on my own in this fabulous city. So they went to three shows, so there were three evenings when... I was, or two evenings in one day when I was on my own, and it was really nice to kind of have that balance of socializing, but also just being able to take in the city slowly and enjoy all the sights and sounds and strange things that you see in a big city. It was fun. <laughs> I am, and I, the, the, Lines were drawn just a little bit too thinly. I did it with a ballpoint pen, so they weren't showing up. So I'm just going over them with my Sharpie pen so that they will show up. I like, I like the structure that journaling lines give. Now, I'm just talking about how I could treat these heart wood veneers. I could paint them. I could use that glaze, that gold glaze that comes in the mixed media add-on for this month. Could have used that. I used extra glue here because this wood veneer has to stick to both the doily and the background paper that pops through the holes of the doily. So I wanted that to, I just wanted to mention that. I decided to leave my wood veneer plain, but as I said, they could have very easily, I could have very easily covered them if I wanted to make them a color. I'm just using these letter stickers that came in the embellishment add-on to spell out NYC in that pretty green. That green shows up in the pattern paper and it looks good. I, I thought I was done, but it just felt like it needed a little bit more detail. And on a more simple page, these sorts of details really show up and shine. So that's why I thought it was important to just add a little something extra. So I cut a slit into two sides of my page here, and I'm going to back those slits with a tiny touch more of this pattern paper. It's a brownie, reddy, orangey color with uh, pink hearts on it. And I'm just going to place it so that I'm maximizing the hearts that are showing. I did distress the edges of the little torn pieces so that it looks like it was actually torn. And 
these two torn edges create little triangles that look like arrows that point. So this one points eventually over to the photo and the other one points to the journaling. I'm just unsticking some parts there where the adhesive was showing. And now I'm going to use my tiny attacher, which is another one of those tools I reach for all the time. I so often that I ran out of staples here and I'm running out. This is only, I think my second box of staples that I've bought. So I'm, I'm going to be on my third in all of my years of scrapping. That's all those staples last forever and ever. So I just added some staples to those tears just to add a little bit more interest on those little elements that I added there. And here are the close-ups. Now before I share the photos, just a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen, so big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad-free access to all of my process videos and real-time unedited versions of my videos, as well as a monthly live stream, some behind the scenes videos, and a few other perks as well. So thanks to these folks, it's people like Morella and Elise and Stephanie who really make this channel happen. So big, big thanks. And here is a close up. My original photo, the shaker was reflected on my light. So I took a couple of closer, closer photos of the of the shaker box in particular. You'll see another one coming up. There's that little detail that I added at the end. I really like that. I think it adds a lot. And there's the journaling, which looks lovely there on the background paper. I love doing my journaling right on the background paper. There's another close up of all those beautiful sequins. And this is one of three pages that I made during the same sitting. So if you would like to see me create the other two, I'm planning to create one process video that includes both of those layouts because they came together super quick. So please join me on my next video if you'd like to see how those two pages came together. Thanks so much for watching and have yourself a really great scrappy week.